Hello, and welcome back to my study up here at Dongit's Model Railway. Today I'm working on this early run Merg DTC-8A train detector, fixing a design problem. When the updated A revision of the board was first developed, the outline of the transistors was drawn the wrong way around on the board. To fix it, I need to desolder the eight transistors and put them back in the other way around. Desoldering components is not as simple as it sounds. In theory, you just melt the solder and pull the component out, but in practice there are many problems with this. Components have many legs, and solder doesn't like to stay melted. If you try it this way, you either need to get all of the legs melted all the way through at once, or bend the legs and pull them out one at a time. Removing as much of the solder as you can with a tool like this solder sucker will definitely help. When the plunger on the solder sucker springs back, there's a sudden small vacuum and it picks up the molten solder. It's not going to pick up 100% of the solder, but you can clear the majority of it. In my experience, you never get enough of it out to slide the legs of the component out of the board while cold. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Check the link in the description for a discount on your first order. I am using a fine screwdriver to put light pressure on the transistor and the soldering iron to melt the solder on two of the three pads at once. I'm alternating which side I melt to walk the transistor out of the board. This isn't a particularly nice way of doing it, but it does work. I have managed to recover the first transistor this way. However, it is clear this technique won't work for the ones further in on the board. I don't have enough hands to hold everything. There's too much stuff in the way, and frankly, something's probably going to break. This is an exponentially worse problem with larger components. Something with more pins, like a resistor network or IC socket, is not practical to recover intact unless you have some specialist tools or are willing to sacrifice the board to get the component out. What happens if you use a typical soldering iron is you end up overheating some of the pins and pads while others are still not properly melted. You'll most likely pull the copper off the board somewhere trying to separate them. As a result, when removing components from a board, you need to either prioritize component recovery and be willing to sacrifice the board in that process, or prioritize board reuse and be willing to sacrifice the components. Merck have looked after their customers well and provided everyone who bought one of the early DTC-8A kits with a replacement set of transistors to make this process easier. As a result, I can cut off the old ones above the board unsolder each of the remaining stubs of legs one at a time, pulling the stub out with a pair of tweezers. This will make keeping the board in a usable condition, which is obviously the point here, much easier. This raises the question, why did I even attempt to recover the first one like I did? Well firstly to show you how I'd go about it if I needed to, but secondly so that I had a spare, just in case there was a problem later and I needed one. Even inserting the new components into the board is a challenge. With the fine tip on the soldering iron, I can sometimes get the hole clear, but most of the time it doesn't want to clear up and the solder will span back across. It's tempting to try drilling the solder out with a fine drill. With the right size tiny drill and a very steady hand, that may work. But in other cases, you might remove the holes through plating, splitting the top and the bottom pad apart. I've decided to melt any remaining solder and push the legs through one at a time. This will preserve the through plating on the hole, but is a bit more difficult. So how did we end up here? What went wrong that we ended up with a faulty kit like this? The original Merg DTC-8 is a long-standing Merg kit, originally designed for a now obsolete layout control bus called Remote Panel Control, or RPC for short. The original PCB was laid out long and thin. I have a few of the earlier ones in service on my layer, like this example. The blank part at one end is intended to connect to other RPC modules, creating a set of PCBs with a continuous bus formed through the connectors either side of the top of the module. No one is building new layouts controlled by RPC anymore, and hasn't been for some years. Most of the other RPC kits are no longer offered via the Merg stores at this point, but this specific kit was useful outside of the context of RPC, and people kept buying it and using it. As a cost-saving measure, the RPC-specific parts were no longer shipped, even with the old PCB. 
If you did actually want to use it with RPC, you'd have to source the components for the RPC segment yourself. When the supplies of the old board were running low, Merg took the opportunity to redesign the board to a more convenient form factor without the RPC connection at the top. This resulted in the revised DTC-8A kit. However, a mistake was made and the outline of the transistors was drawn the wrong way round. This wasn't detected initially, because it turns out the board actually still works assembled like that. It's just much less sensitive and requires a higher current to trigger. A running loco was pulling enough current to trigger it, so test builds were reported as successful. But in live usage, people using resistive axles to detect vehicles behind the loco found issues with reliable detection, and the problem with the PCB design was diagnosed. If you were to buy one of these kits now, you'll get a corrected version which doesn't have this defect. As we're talking about PCB design and production, humour me for a second as I plug my channel sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay is a rapid prototyping service which allows you to have professional quality PCBs made to your custom designs. Create a gerber file in the software of your choice, upload it to PCBWay's service, and have the completed board sent to you in any quantity from 5 upwards. Pricing is sufficiently affordable that us model railway hobbyists can create our own custom PCBs for our own projects. And if it turns out that everybody wants one of your custom PCBs, PCBWay have the capacity to deal with large orders too. PCBWay are currently discounting prices on 4 and 6 layer PCBs up to 20% compared to previous pricing. Now might be a good time to look into rapid prototyping, particularly if your project needed additional layers. Sign up with the link in the description to get $5 of free credit towards your first order. If you're designing your own PCBs, the problem I'm dealing with here is exactly the kind of thing you'll need to watch out for. It's very easy to be thinking about how tracks lay out on the bottom of the PCB, and forget to flip your brain around when moving to draw the component outlines for the top side print layer. I don't know if this is actually what happened in this case, but I have caught myself making exactly that mistake on one of my own previous boards, and drawing the component as it would appear if fitted to the bottom of the board would produce exactly this error we're dealing with here. Extracting that one initial transistor with the legs intact did turn out to be useful. I've managed to fit one of the transistors in the middle of the board on autopilot and put it back in the wrong way round still. The component matches outline instinct is really hard to override. I've had to remove that newly fitted transistor again and replace it with one fitted the correct way round, the opposite of the board outline. Unfortunately I didn't manage to spot the problem before I'd already cut the tails off. Fitting the last transistor with pre-cut legs was a bit more of a challenge. It did go in in the end though. Now I've reworked all of the transistors on this board, it's time to test it. We know it would work fine with the loco previously. The problem case was an axle with a 10k resistor. I haven't actually got any resistor fitted stock yet, but I've wound a spare 10k resistor around the pins of this bogey with integrated pickups. This should produce the same test case. The three sections that are relevant to test are the main and berth section for the storage yard approach block, plus the yard entrance block where all the points are. You can see the different LEDs coming on and off as the bogey moves about between the three sections. This is now working as expected, and this is a task that can be ticked off the to-do list. See you next time up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway.